Basketball Talk Pro. My name is Ron Ecker. Uh, the title may be a little bit um, disconcerting, but um, I, I, you know, in some uh, areas they call it the golden bullet. Well, I got two things to say about the golden bullet. First of all, what I'm going to present today is not the golden bullet, but it leads up to the golden bullet. Thus, I call it silver, the silver bullet. But secondly, and maybe just as important, there used to be a show, a radio show, that I listened to as a very young uh, person uh, called The Lone Ranger and Tonto. And The Lone Ranger used the silver bullet. And I've never forgotten that. So I thought this was apropos for uh, this particular presentation. I just want to tell you, and if you've listened to our videos before, some of you have listened to them all, um, you know uh, that a lot of the things that we do on this videos, these videos, is not necessarily the accepted thing uh, in with the so-called gods of basketball. Uh, and it certainly isn't what everyone else is doing. Warren Buffett calls those words what everyone else is doing, the most dangerous in the English language. Um, so I just want you to warn you of that and maybe help, help you to make uh, a clear um, listening to it. Uh, opening up with, you know, a blank sheet and giving it a chance. So I am going to now, uh, I want to take you uh, to the silver bullet. Now a simple way of looking at basketball, and this is very simple, uh, is that what we strive to do uh, in one way is to score more points than our opponents on offense using an offense. Uh, but on the other hand, we might be attempting to hold the, the opponents down in scoring so it makes it easier for us to score more than uh, they do. Simply put, that's what we do. We, try, we have to score more points than the uh, opponent. And we have various ways of doing that. But even more important than that, maybe not more important of course, but uh, as far as coaches are concerned, one of the things I don't think many people do as coaches, they don't determine where are the points coming from? Where is the scoring coming from? Where does our defense have to stop? Uh, where are their points uh, coming from? And I want to take a look uh, at that right now. And uh, I think you'll see what I call it, uh, the silver bullet. Well, most of you have heard at one time or another about the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule says that 80% of your results will come from 20% of the people's efforts. 20% of the people, in other words, produce 80% of the results. Uh, or it could be your own individual life. What you do with uh, your time, basically 80% of the time good time you spend in your activity will result in 80% of the results and vice versa. 80% of the time you spent uh, will only result in 20% of the time. Uh, it's a very good book written about that theory. Uh, an awful lot of people follow it. Uh, I personally believe in that. It isn't exactly 80 or 20, but uh, it is a fact that a few things 
uh, result gets you 80% of the results that you want. Uh, so, we don't really have an 80-20 in my presentation of the silver bullet, but we're close. We have a 70-30 uh, uh, philosophy. And what I mean by that is 70% of our points are scored by 30% of our effort. 70% of our, of our points are scored in unstructured play. Uh, in play that is hardly noticed. 30% of our points is scored from structured play. Plays are most of it. But yet we run a lot more plays uh, in a course of a game. In fact, it's almost 70% of the time we are running a play of some kind. And with some coaches, uh, more than that. Uh, and so, uh, but yet, no matter what level of basketball, NBA, college, I, I don't keep, I am not able to keep track of high school very well. It's difficult to get, uh, you know, information from so many schools. But I do know college and uh, the NBA. Uh, and the 70-30 rule uh, is effective. It, it's it's uh, uh, pretty firm. In fact, it's very, uh, very firm. So let's take a look. Uh, let's put this number up. 100 points. Uh, I use 100. I know it's more of an NBA number than a college number and certainly a high school number. Uh, but regardless, it's a nice number to work with with what I'm talking about. So of that 100 points, and it doesn't make any difference which team it is. Uh, it doesn't, the white team or the black team, uh, their points at the end, 70% of them are coming from unstructured play. In other words, not even coached, not even taught. Uh, to the players. 30% basically represents your plays. And it's what you spend probably 80% of your offensive practice on is learning and running plays. Most people at least and most uh, uh, coaches. But yet 70% of your points are going to come from that small area of unstructured play. That's our 70-30 uh, uh, rule. Now, what makes up that 70%? First of all, remember this. Uh, unstructured play is basically pickup pick up game play, playground. Uh, play. Um, all of our people in the United States, all of our players, by the time they get to be a high school player, have played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pickup games. There's no doubt they know uh, they know how to do that. Um, I have a little problem with what they learn sometimes in those pickup games, but still, uh, they're learning to play without structure and uh, so it's fairly easy for them uh, and as they get older they've even had more times of basically the biggest difference between US basketball as I see it and having been uh, play been coaching uh, internationally two or three times um, that's the main difference. Our players play more 
on the playground uh, pick up games than they do. In China, for example, they hardly played or practiced uh, games. Uh, and so consequently, they could do a lot of things good, especially run drills, very good. They couldn't play in games like our, our players can. That was a major difference. But now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, where are those 70 points coming from? You see, we're narrowing down this process. We're getting deeper and deeper into, uh, you know, understanding our, our game as, as coaches, uh, helping us to make decisions on a, on a lot of things. First of all, we run a play. But the play doesn't result in a shot. Uh, and so the clock is running in some of the leagues, um, but uh, all of a sudden the play is broken. Uh, they don't get a shot. What do they do? At this point, they do what they do on the playground and in pickup games. They go on their own. You can call it going on their own. Uh, and uh, again, you know, they're very good at this. Um, but uh, so we have a play. The, critic, uh, the uh, real trick to this is to, be un to understand and to have a place to keep track of breakdowns. A play breaks down. It happens a lot. It happens a whole lot in very competitive plays, such as the playoffs, or in college, uh, the NCAA tournament, because so many people know what you're going to do. So much of what you're doing is predictable. Uh, so the plays break down more, especially you watch the NBA Finals, where it's really competitive. Seven games, I mean, they, they have you pretty well figured out. Uh, and so they break down a lot. Uh, and the team that can handle breakdowns the best uh, usually uh, wins. But you have to see, you have to understand and see when it, it crosses that line from play to breakdown. And this is where many people get confused. They see, say, a middle pick and roll run because it runs so much. Uh, they see that as, as the beginning, and whatever happens after that, they give it credit to the pick and roll. But it may not have anything to do with the middle screen and roll. It may become completely afterwards, the, and, they, and they shouldn't uh, attribute it to that uh, to that part of the play. Um, and so, you know, even if they are uh, trying to keep track of their points by, by what their offense does, uh, chances are they're not reading it correctly. Only people who spend a lot of time at it can do that, or will do that. Everybody can do it, but not a lot uh, will do it. Here's the other area, fast breaks. Fast breaks in the NBA, or at least when I was there, they counted it, anything scored within 60, six seconds after you got the ball. Uh, that's what they called a fast break basket or a miss or whatever. Uh, I'm inclined to tell you that it's less than that. It's more like four seconds. Uh, here's why. Anybody in high school up and up can run from free throw line to free throw line in less than four seconds. So as an offensive team, if you, you have to be very almost perfect with the outlet pass, or if it's off a of steal, it's a lot easier. Outlet pass, push the ball, and beat most of the 
uh, the opponents uh, down there because they can run uh, if they choose to to run uh, so I look at four seconds rather than um, but I don't make decisions based on four seconds what I make my decision on is the defense down there in a position not necessarily a good position but they have people there that match pretty closely to the offense you can learn how to do that uh, because after that then we have a term where we put the points trends I think I spelled that wrong transition I did transition and um, we use that only as a statistical you can call that any most coaches call that the secondary offense I don't know that they have a secondary offense but this is what they usually do transition and uh, so we use that as a statistical place to put the points when they aren't scored on the fast break uh, they're scored on, in transition then the third area is no plays. Now, on no plays is a little, there is fewer of them, but more than you might think. The two examples I'll give you. I'm not saying that this is the only way it happens, but uh, here's the first example. Uh, you come down, the, the coach calls the play, the point guard calls the play, the players get set to play it, and then they realize that they have a big guy posting up with a little guy on them. You know, they got a lot of names for that. Mouse in the house, you know, all of that. Uh, but uh, they break the play then because, because there's no play. There wasn't any play. They haven't ran a play. They just change and they try to get the ball into that, uh, that player. Very, very normal behavior uh, in a game. The second example I'll give you is you come down, you run a play, you shoot, you miss, you get the offensive rebound but you can't put it back up. So you throw it out. Now it, when they catch that ball out there they'd have time to, uh, they almost got full 24 seconds, they'd have time to run a play. But most of them don't and they probably shouldn't because when that ball comes out that defense is all mixed up and so they attacked they attacked with their instincts they attacked with what they learned to play over years and years and years on those playgrounds and in those dark gyms and sweaty gyms uh, this is normal and natural uh, for them so those are the three areas that most of those points come from. In fact, I think all of them. The only thing is you might score a certain amount off a fast break, but you also might score a certain amount off a of place. The difference is this is unstructured. This is structured. Uh, and, that's, and that's what's happening in a game. Um, my next video will be to show you how to recognize the difference between play and breakdown, fast break and transition, and the no play. So that you can understand. It's not, uh, not a great skill, but it is a skill you have to learn. The more you do it, the, more, the better you get at it. Uh, but... Uh, it's hard when you don't know the opponent's plays, one team's plays. But after a while, you even get used to that. Uh, cause there isn't that much difference in what teams uh, do. Uh, but, uh, but even when you come against a play you've never seen, you don't know, there's some tricky situations. One of them is uh, the random pick and roll. Uh, it may be part of the play. But it may be not a part of the play. Hard, you have to use good judgment 
on that. We're going to talk about that in the next uh, video so that you can get a, a, get a way of, uh, of uh, understanding and evaluating your own team. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, uh, and we'll see you next time.